in West Africa. It's hot as hell <laughs> in Ghana. Um, sometimes, the other day I left out of the house and I was like, I couldn't even open my eyes. I was just like, oh my gosh, it's bright, it's hot. Oh, like, y'all, that's how hot it is here. It can go up to like 35 degrees Celsius or um, 90 degrees Fahrenheit like it, it gets hot and, it, and, it's, and it's bright but I love that if I'm you know because I love how my skin looks in this weather but um, Tanzania's weather is actually similar to Ghana uh, Rwanda is very cool at night but it's warm during the day and hot sometimes um, and then Kenya was really cold when I got there so I really wasn't feeling that and it was very gloomy and then Kampala was more of the neutral environment and I love Kampala's weather because for in my opinion like I like when it's not too hot not too warm guys welcome back to my channel today I am in Ghana I told you guys I'm staying in the Coco Beach area it's called Coco Beach and um, I'm living here now so I've been here now for about two months and a lot of people have been asking me what are the differences between East Africa and West Africa as you know I visited Ghana in 2018 for my first time and I fell in love with it and I was supposed to come here last year but I ended up traveling throughout East Africa first starting in Rwanda then eventually going to Tanzania Nairobi um, and Kampala so I've been to four countries in East Africa and only Ghana in West Africa but um, I know that there are other West African countries that people are interested in but being that this is the most popular country that expats look for, I'm like, you know what, let me just tell you guys the differences that I personally experienced. Um, so, first things first, the biggest difference between East Africa and West Africa is the food. Um, a lot of the foods that I ate in East Africa are like more Indian inspired. So you have food like chapati, uh, which is like kind of like a soft taco type of bread um, that they make uh, for breakfast. They start breakfast off with milk and tea in Tanzania, which I really enjoyed uh, actually. That was my first time having milk and tea. So um, yeah, I liked it. Uh, so that was a new experience for me. But um, here in West Africa, how they start breakfast, it's just like how we started in Jamaica like we share some of the same meals that we have in Jamaica so they call it Milo but in Jamaica we drink Milo for breakfast my brother drank it before his football games or soccer games and yeah that was just something that was really popular in Jamaica so to see it here it's like it feels like home but um, basically the food is way more bland in east africa there's not a lot of seasonings that you're used to in america or used to in jamaica uh, there's not many spices so if you like spicy flavorful food like myself um east africa may not be the best choice for you um, and i'm a big foodie so i love to eat and that's i realized being that the time that i spent in east africa i was really missing the type of foods that i um used to have in Jamaica or in America and they have more similar foods to that in Ghana uh, so yeah that is a hugest difference um, for, for example when you want to go and eat some food for lunch they have a lot of chicken and cuckoo and chips in East Africa which is chips and chicken so that's what most people have for like lunch some people have it for dinner some people also whenever you want to have it but that was like the thing that was most commonly sold every time I would leave the house of course they have chapati and different type of uh, 
meals, but that was the one that I could, you know, stomach every day or every other day. But eventually I grew tired of it. Um, and I felt like for me and my taste buds, East Africa um, lacked a lot of flavor for me <laughs> and a lot of variety. Uh, there was not much variety in Tanzania, but there was much more variety in Kampala. Um, I didn't spend much time in Rwanda, but from what I saw, they seem to have a lot more variety. But overall, East Africa, they eat a lot of the same foods in every country. You'll see everyone eats chips and chicken. Like, that's the most common thing to eat. And here, they have more, in West Africa, more so like rice. So, in Jamaica, we eat white rice with curry chicken. They have that here. So, it's easy for me to give that to my daughter or give it to, or feed myself. And we actually enjoy the food and have a variety. So, they have white rice. They have jollof rice. They have fried rice. I like rice more than chips. If I'm going to eat carbs, I like rice more than chips, you know. So, I'm more so aligned with the food in West Africa. Um, they have rices. They have meat. They have... You know, all of this stuff, goat, um, some people eat cow meat. Um, they eat the same type of meats in West and East Africa, but how they cook it is different, if that makes sense. So how you're used to it being seasoned, if you're coming from the West and you like more flavorful foods, you will more so align with the food in West Africa. So that's the, that's the first difference. So the next major difference is the culture. The culture, um, yeah. So overall, in um, in East Africa, there's more mostly Muslim people, um, a higher percentage of Muslims, and in West Africa, there's a higher percentage of Christians. So um, of course, things are more modest as far as like how you dress in East Africa um, if you want to feel like you belong uh, you have to be more modest on that end um, that's not for me clearly so um, yeah I didn't feel comfortable with that um, just because I am an athlete and I've always been used to showing skin I used to run track and track and field so I, I don't feel bad about showing my legs my arm but if that's something that you that's if that's how you are you won't enjoy East Africa because overall, like, things are way different. Now, in Kampala, people are more, um, if you if you do want to go to East Africa and you want somewhere that's, like, more accepting to different dress codes, I would say go to either Nairobi or Kampala. But overall, in, like, Rwanda and in uh, Tanzania, they're very modest. So... Just be wary of that. Actually, in Rwanda, actually, they show a lot, a little bit more skin than Tanzania. So Tanzania is definitely the most um, modest of them all. But overall, like if you do too much, especially in the daytime, you will look get looked at like you're an alien. So that's a huge difference. And then also um, in in uh, so I haven't went to church in years um since my father passed away because i used to go to church with him um so on sun how i how i listen to the word i listen to podcasts i listen listen to different people um for my personal reasons because i think a lot of people pose and they pose to be a certain way in the church and it, it just causes a lot of distractions for me so i would much rather listen to someone uh different people different speakers different um, not even preachers, but people who just like uh, telling me about the word, educating me on the word, and how I should move. And uh, so, yeah, I haven't been to church in a while, but here in Ghana, people go to church on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They go to church every freaking day. And on Sunday, they go to church all day. So, uh, that's different for me. Um, especially because uh, on Sunday, a lot of the establishments are closed all day, and some of them don't open until like 12 p.m. You know, because they take church really seriously, and they take Sunday the most serious as far as like worshiping God. So, um, in West Africa, 
Sunday is strictly for, um, you know, the Christians here, and it doesn't matter if they don't have any money, if uh, they have a lot of money, everybody goes to church. Um, it, it, it was odd for me to see that because um, in America, if you don't have money, you're not going to church. You're more so focused on trying to make money, you know, but uh, here everybody goes to church every day of the week. So that is a little different. Um, it's something I had to get used to, especially when you want certain um, services on Sunday and you can't get to it until a certain time. It's like, okay, yeah, this is different. But in East Africa, most people are Muslim, so they don't go to church on Sunday. So if you want certain things on Sunday, just know that it's going to be open. So uh, religion is, is like a huge difference between East Africa and West Africa. Um, of course, the dress code, like I mentioned, and uh, culture-wise, um, let's say lifestyle. Let's talk about the lifestyle. In Uganda, in Tanzania, I don't know about Rwanda because I didn't spend much time there to see the lifestyle, but it seemed like in East Africa, people seem to be more of like a drinker. They drink a lot, you know, especially in Uganda and Tanzania, but I don't see that a lot here in uh, West Africa since I've been here. I see more so smokers, like people like to smoke, you know, the herb. Uh, I see that more here, especially in this beach town that I'm living in. I don't know about a car, but it, yeah, it doesn't seem like people are much of a drinker in West Africa as they are in East Africa. So I don't know why that is, but yeah, that's the differences in the culture and the lifestyle. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting to mention something. Oh, okay, lifestyle. In West Africa, you guys, if you want, if you're more of an outgoing person, if you're a little bit loud like myself, you like to have enjoyment, um, you know, you like to go out, you like to party, like, this is more of a vibe for you in West Africa than it is in East Africa, because, um, you know, certain times I was looked at like, what the heck, in East Africa, because I'm just a little more alive, I'm a little more outgoing. Um, but if you are like that, I would say go towards Kampala if you're going to East Africa because they're more of the, um, they, they more so like enjoyment than any of the other East African countries that I've been to. But they're still pretty uh, conservative. Um, overall, in East Africa, things are just way more conservative. But in Ghana, in West Africa, what I've noticed is people love enjoyment, even if it's a funeral, like, they just love enjoyment so uh they had a parade like of kids marching down the street and i put the video here for you guys but my daughter she loves enjoyment so when she seen the kids like marching she wanted to be a part of it and they said come come but she was shy <laughs> And also they had a funeral like a few days later and they were um, celebrating uh, the life of this person and we thought it was another parade so my daughter started dancing and people were looking at her like uh, it's a funeral but you know that's how we celebrate funerals and that's how we celebrate life uh, a life of someone in Jamaica so it's really similar to Jamaican culture in that way because when we have funerals, it's a huge party. So that is the major similarities between Caribbean culture and um, West Africa, and I love that. So they just love enjoyment in West Africa. So if you are still young, you want to have fun, even if you're older and you're just a young spirit, I would suggest West Africa over East Africa. But if you're more conservative, you're not really loud, you're very soft-spoken, uh, you, you're more conservative, I would say go towards East Africa. Um, 
yeah so that is a major difference in like culture lifestyle religion between east africa and west africa more conservative more enjoyment <laughs> so yeah it's just based on your personal preferences you guys um no part of africa is better than the other i'm just here to advise you guys on which which where to go because if you've never traveled here uh, you will have no idea which way to go and I, I, I certainly didn't so that's why I'm doing this video because uh, I just want to give you guys more clarity so I'm not trying to form a wedge between the two um, so yeah so the next major difference is transportation in East Africa as soon as I got there especially in Rwanda they had a lot of bodas so bodas are like motorcycles um, sort of like mopeds, some people have mopeds, but it's mostly motorcycles. And in East Africa, most people have bodas. More so, they travel around on bodas and cars, they have boat, they have Uber. But I noticed most people use the motorcycles to travel around. It was similar to the experience I had when I traveled to Phuket, Thailand. Um, when I went to Thailand, they had a lot of mopeds, bikes, it just made it easier for people to get around and honestly i like that transportation system a lot so um you know if you want to go somewhere quick somewhere fast and you see a boulder you could they just come up to you 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 fan them down and you get it go on about your way and i really like that because if I, they sometimes would be on the dirt roads like it's easier for those um boulders to get to the um to the dirt roads uh, and that's where most most of the residential areas are on the back dirt road So when you have boaters driving around it just makes things more convenient for you to go from point A to point B straight from your home uh, But here in Ghana, they have taxis uh, They have boat they have uber they do have motorcycles But a lot of those guys just joy riding them on a motorcycle like they're part of a bike club or something like they're really not using it for business and from what I've heard um, here in Ghana they used to have people that use that as like a transport system but a lot of the guys were getting drunk and crashing the motorcycle so um, it's not just it's not the best option here to get around on a motorcycle so uh, what I found to be the fastest transportation system in Ghana is to go on the um, go on to the get uh, flag a taxi and get in a taxi and you just share it like a shared Uber in America. So how the shared Ubers are in America, that's exactly how the cabs are. Only thing is you're not using your phone. You flag them, you tell them, you point in whichever direction you want to go, and uh, they and, and they'll stop if they are headed in that direction and you jump in and you pay half as 50 cent less than what 50 percent less than what you would pay boat or uber to get to uh, your destination so i think that's really cost effective and it's really fast um than sitting there and waiting for a boat because here in my city that i'm in it's a beach town things are more spread out so if i try to ride in boat or uber it's so it takes so long uh sometimes 12 20 minutes for them to 12 to 20 minutes for them to get to my location so i would much rather flag down a cab and get to where i gotta go but i'm sure in a car things are way faster with boat and uber because that's what i used when i first got here in 2018 but um motorcycles are more so used in east africa as the main transport and here it's cabs and uh chochos i think like the buses but I don't really feel comfortable on those buses. I'm really claustrophobic and uh, I already have social anxiety. I'm not getting on the bus. The, the cab was already a challenge for me. Now I've got it. I've got the system. I understand it. So I'm not nervous anymore. Um, yeah, so those are, those are the main differences in transportation between East and West Africa. Um, if you ask me which one I prefer, I'm from New York. I like to get to where I gotta go it within a uh, within a certain time period. I lived in New York for seven years, so I like to get somewhere fast. So
So in East Africa, things are way faster as far as um, transportation, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so that's the difference. Uh, and uh, relationships, relationships. I didn't even write anything down, you guys. It's coming straight from my head. But relationships, what I realized, okay, uh, if you are a single black man, it'll be way, it'll be way easier for you to find a spouse because women are, it, the women are more single from, from what I've seen and they're looking for a man. Um, but in East Africa, I realized as a single black woman, it's not the best place to go if you if you are still open to love and open to finding someone, uh, because a lot of the guys they are married very young. So uh, at 25, they're married. You know, most guys are married by like 25. But here in West Africa, I realized a lot of the guys are still single until maybe about like 28, 29 years old. And it works for me because they think I'm younger, even though I'm not. <laughs> we'll have to talk about my age. But uh, yeah, I realize that here, people are single longer than they are in um, East Africa. So if you are open to love or looking for love um, as a woman, I wouldn't suggest going to East Africa, but you never know um, how I see it. If you're chasing your purpose or something feels right to you, wherever you are, love will find you, you know? But if you are specifically looking for that as a black woman, I wouldn't suggest going in that direction. Because um, West Africa is more aligned with uh, the ways of the West. And so people um, are more evolved when it comes to, um, you know, being tied down early like they don't feel it's necessary all the time like um it is in west in east africa because east africa people get married very young and marriage is seen as more of like a business so um it's the same way here but i realize that they're evolving more to the ways of the west um yeah so relationships are different in that way and also the men in uh, West Africa are a lot more aggressive in their approach, and I love that. <laughs> I'm not the type to chase a man. Um, my mom always said, chase your purpose, chase education, and men will come to you. So I truly believe in that. Um, um, you know, I'm not looking for love, but I am open to it. So being in West Africa, my um, options are increasing because I have more men approach me in West Africa than they ever did in East Africa because East Africa clearly you know a lot of the guys were very attracted to me by the looks they would give me how they would talk to me but um, the approach was way more laid back and conservative because overall it's just way more of a conservative um, environment so just keep that in mind if you are looking for a relationship and it's the same with women like here they're just more outspoken um, than they are in the east so if you are looking for relationships please keep that in mind um, yeah what else what else weather 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 okay in West Africa it's hot as hell <laughs> in Ghana uh, sometimes the other day I left out of the house and I was like I couldn't even open my eyes. I was just like, oh my gosh, it's bright, it's hot. Oh, like, y'all, that's how hot it is here. It can go up to like 35 degrees Celsius or um, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Like, it, it gets hot and, it, and, it's, and it's bright. But I love that if I'm, you know, cause I love how my skin looks in this weather, but, um, Tanzania's weather is actually similar to Ghana. Uh, Rwanda is very cool at night, but it's warm during the day and hot sometimes. Um, and then Kenya was really cold when I got there. So I really wasn't feeling that and it was very gloomy. And then Kampala was more of the neutral environment. And I love Kampala's weather because for, in my opinion, like 
I like when it's not too hot, not too warm. So Kampala had more of like an Indian summer type of weather where in Celsius it varied between 18 and 25 degrees, which to me was perfect. But sometimes like if you are looking to dry your clothes on a hang line and it's raining or it's cold, your stuff takes a little bit um, longer to dry. So that was like the only con with their weather. But here, like you put your things on a hang line and it's dry in like one to two hours, you know? So uh, that's, a, that's a difference. Um, is East Africa, the, the weather varies a lot more. So if you're traveling from country to country, just keep in mind that you should re research like the seasons before you travel from one country to the next to figure out like what's best for you um, because they have different variation of seasons and weather and um, temperatures in East Africa than they do here in West Africa. So um, that's a major difference in um, the weather there. So you guys, I think I've touched on all the topics. I do have a class in 20 minutes. Did I mention everything? I think that's it. What else did I talk about? I maybe should do a live. Okay, so next time, you guys, leave any comments or any questions you have below about the differences between East Africa and West Africa. Anything you want to know, just let me know. And I'm going to touch on that in a Q&A in my next video. We can do a live. And I'll come out here and do a live with you guys. I wish you could see the beach. But the beach that I'm looking at right now is completely different than the beach that I'm used to. Because it's so much trash. And I know it's because they just had Independence Day yesterday. But uh, yeah. So just ask me any questions you want to know in the live and I'll answer it. Um, I mean, ask me any questions you wanna know in my comments and I'll touch on it in my live video. Um, so thank you for watching, you guys. Have a good day. One love. Bye.